anybody remember the far off and distant year of 2020? Like a lot of people, around March, I suddenly found myself with an overabundance of free time. I wanted to be productive with it, so I taught myself how to animate. It's been interesting. Uh, animation is hard. But this video isn't really about that. Well, it kind of is since it's animated. No. What this video is really about is the other thing I got up to during lockdown. Tabletop role-playing games. And, and boy, the howdy, what a what a rabbit hole to fall into. I mean, I mean, Jesus Christ. For the uninitiated, tabletop role-playing games, or TTRPGs for short, are games where you start by reading a two to six hundred page rulebook. You then take a couple hours out of your day to make your character, write out their life story, give them bonuses based on whether their parents love them enough, and then you get to play dolls for four hours with your precious handcrafted child, where you roll weird looking dice to see if they die or not. This is all orchestrated by a game master or GM whose job is to keep track of the aforementioned 400 pages of rules and put together scenarios for players. That and pray, pray that if the players do not follow their planned path that they can still cook up something on the spot that's still fun and that the night doesn't go completely off the rails and everyone will still want to come back next time and keep playing. I started with Dungeons and Dragons, but when it came to running my own game, I decided I wanted to GM Call of Cthulhu. Call of Cthulhu is a TTRPG taking place in a world based on the works of a very famous racist. You play as a group of investigators in the 1920s, working to uncover some manner of horrible eldritch secret without succumbing to the madness that it brings. So it's like peeing on Twitter, or really anywhere on the internet these days. Man, what, what happened? Anyway. I've run a campaign on and off with a group of friends for around four years now. I've poured a whole lot of time, thought, and effort into it, and the process of playing out this long-form story with my friends has been super fun and super fulfilling. I've wanted to adapt or document this ongoing adventure for a while, but for the longest time I was at a bit of a loss as to how exactly to do it. I've now realized that I've got to approach it the same way that I approach new things in 2020, by just diving right in. So, we go back, way back, to the year 1924, to Arkham, Massachusetts. It's a fictional city on a fictional river, the Miskatonic, a town with many dark and disturbing secrets. It also has a lovely university, Miskatonic U. Noted for its state-of-the-art medical school, prestigious museum, and the world-famous Orne Library, with its collection of strange occult texts. Strangest of all, locked deep within storage, a very old book lies, bound in human skin, and holding some of the darkest secrets known to man. The Necronomicon. But, before we get to all that, let's introduce our cast. When I started running Cthulhu, I got together three players for the game, known as Investigators. First there is... Ulysses. A former star of the stage, famed for his, um, devastating glower. His hit show, The Devil Woman, was performed around the country and abroad. But those days are far behind him now. Film has killed the stage star. Still, he was able to retire quite comfortably here in Arkham free to indulge in a growing fascination with the occult. Lately, he's been trying to get his hands on a tome of eldritch lore, something to read with his lady friend, Florence Foster Jenkins. Serena. A runaway from France, she arrived in Arkham with her sister three years ago. Since then, her sister has relocated to New York to pursue a career in acting, but Serena has continued to lay low. Always hanging over her is a fear of the past, of a terrible mistake catching up with her. She's turned to reading tarot cards for tourists in order to make ends meet, but when it comes to divining her own future, fear stays her hand. Leslie. A fresh arrival from France as well, but Leslie is here for business. Her job? 
She is an agent of France's spy agencies, operating out of the Ministry of War. Her speciality, though, has little to do with military affairs. Her focus is on the activities of cults, seldom known to the public, those seeking to sow chaos and bring an end to civilization as we know it. For Leslie, this mission has a personal angle, her Catholic faith being at the core of why she does this. And so, our three investigators, each with their own backgrounds and skills, converge on a fateful night. On the 10th of September, 1924, 7.15 p.m., the course of their lives changes forever. See you there. <laughs>